When I was a kid, Air Bud was one of my favorite movies of all time. I would replay it over and over and over at my house. But that doesn't mean that it's a perfect movie. In fact, this movie's wacky. This movie's crazy. I dare say, at times, this movie makes zero sense. So even though three and four year old me loved this movie, let's see what 29 year old me thinks of this movie, because it may be a completely different opinion. My name is Ryan Askew, and welcome to this video. You know this movie's gonna be good when it's got a guy named Eric Christmas in it. So this movie starts with happy-go-lucky Disney. Disney music playing, but the dog is getting slammed around in the back of the truck the whole time this is happening like a pinball machine. My goodness, man, take it easy. So this down on his luck clown man immediately introduces himself to the kid who answers the door and gets kicked straight in the shin. Hey kids, it's happy slappy time. If anyone ever comes to my house and says to my future kids, hey kids, it's happy slappy time. They're gonna quickly be escorted to the door. So Mr. Clown Man here spends essentially the next couple minutes doing what I try to do when my wife is hangry and I'm trying to keep her happy. And just like with me and my wife, these kids are not impressed at all. So I feel you, clown man, I feel you. But once the dog gets involved and starts catching balls, he can do no wrong and all the kids absolutely love it. Until the dog hits a big ball back into the clown's face and for some reason he exaggeratedly falls for way too long and then he tries to chase the dog around in the worst possible way I've ever seen in my entire life. Like the dog is nowhere near him here and he literally body slams the chair. Just like an actual clown, he may actually be the clumsiest person I've ever seen. So because he essentially destroys the entire party, he gets kicked out, and he tells the dog that he's going to send it to the pound. The dog pound! I got a vicious dog! No, it's a horrible dog! It's a menace! So when you go to the pound and you say you have like a vicious dog, and then you show up with a golden retriever wearing a clown suit who's like the sweetest dog ever, I wonder, do they just still take the dog? And next, the most anxiety-inducing scene happens as the dog is teeter-tottering on the back of the bed of this truck, and then slides onto the middle of the highway, and then it shows an 18 wheel are coming straight at it that barely misses it but no we're not out of the woods yet here comes another car and then boom it gets hit by the car and you think the dog would be heavily injured by this but he's not but out crawls the clown dog just standing there in his nice red white polka dot clown clothes and the mom is wondering why did I hit this random box in the road what is it doing here but the boy can clearly see that a dog just came out of that box which would make most people ask many questions and especially most kids be like hey mom there's a dog that just walked out of there and and for some reason, he's wearing a clown suit. So you think that the next thing that's gonna happen, he's gonna say something to his mom and then they're gonna take the dog home possibly, right? Wrong, that's not what happens. He just stares at him and they drive off. And now our poor dog is off on its own to fend for itself. So we get introduced to protagonist Josh and his family who have just moved to a new home. What do you think, huh? And Josh is clearly not too happy about this move. And we find out that the reason why this is is because his dad passed away recently in a plane accident. And we find out that this basketball, and basketball in general, has a lot of meaning to him because he pulls out a picture of his father and him playing with the same basketball. I know, really depressing stuff. So now mom explains to the principal why she moved the family to a new house. You see, when his dad passed away last year. Oh, I'm so sorry. I used to spend a lot of time around here, so I thought that the move would really be the best thing for us. So mom thought because she used to spend a lot of time around this area that it'd be a good idea right after his father passed away to move them to a whole different town. While they're talking in the office, Josh decides to go sign up for basketball tryouts right as his mom is saying that he's no longer interested in basketball and decides to put him in band instead. <laughs> So that doesn't go too well for him. But hey, that's pretty much how I sounded in sixth grade band as well. I mean, I did end up playing trombone for 10 years. So everybody, please, please hold your applause. Hold your applause. Thank you. Really, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I did. I did play trombone. I'm just kind of curious why on his first day of band, the band director made him play in front of the whole class. That's like the worst thing to do to a new band kid. Like you think that maybe all these kids also probably suck. So they probably shouldn't be laughing at the other kid who sucks as well. Also, this movie tries to make you think that blowing too hard on a trombone will make the slide fly straight off, which absolutely isn't true. The only thing that blowing too hard on a trombone is gonna do for you is it's gonna make it sound really bad, like a really nasty fart. So now he's all dejected and he's walking home from school because day one was awful and he somehow walks on this like abandoned church with a basketball cord in it. So Josh gets out his basketball to play and now it's time for a pop quiz. Do you think that Josh will either be A, good at basketball or B, really terrible at basketball given the fact that we saw him playing basketball with his dad in the photos earlier? Let's take a look and find out which one it is. 
If you guess B, congratulations, you're correct. So the ball rolls off into the brush and after a long many seconds of weird dog noises, it rolls back out all muddy and gross. And Josh doesn't ask any questions, it just goes straight to the next scene. I know mom, it's not called moonlighting. Oh, I found it. It's not moonlighting, you're allowed to have two jobs. So every time we see this mom in like the first half of the movie, she's running around, she's constantly grabbing like 17 things at once and they're trying to emphasize that she's a single mother. So she's got a lot going on. My mom was a single mother with me the whole time I was a kid, so I understand the single mom dynamic. I also realize as a single mom, you're not just running around like a chicken with your head cut off at all times. Like you actually probably get pretty good at it over time. That's all. I just feel like it's extra. So now we're at basketball tryouts. And if you didn't know this was a Disney movie yet, you now know it because there's three kids that are sitting in the bleachers who are like the popular kid, the popular jock kids who immediately start picking on him. He opens up the door across the gym. And before anybody can see him yet, one of those boys goes, ha, check out the new kid. It's like you stole that ball from the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> I've never seen any kids bully another kid because of the type of basketball he has. And if you are a kid on the basketball team, wouldn't it be something that's really cool to you if someone brought in a ball from the Harlem Globe? I can't say Globetrotters. Wouldn't you think it's really cool if someone brought in a ball from the Harlem Globe? <laughs> I can't say it. I'm going crazy, guys. I can't say, I can't say the full sentence with Harlem Globetrotters in it. Let's go one more time. Let's try. As a kid who loves basketball, wouldn't it be really cool if someone brought in a ball from the Harlem Globetrotters? Let's go. I've got five of my boys back from last year, including leading scorer Larry Willingham. Raise your hands, gentlemen. We are here to win. Because if you can win on the courts, you can win at life. If you can win on the court, that means you're going to be a winner in life. But if you can't win on the court, that means you're going to be a loser at life. Get off the court, you dang loser. So while the basketball tryout's going on, Josh actually ends up just sitting there on the bleachers the whole time and then ends up trying to leave. And as he's leaving, the coach comes up to talk to him. You're new here, right? Well, uh, I could use manager. Manager works his butt off. He arrives before the team. He leaves after the team. Think you handle it? Practice is Friday afternoon. You be here. So the coach pretty much walks in and goes, Hey kid, you want to be my manager? Manager works real hard. He arrives before the team. He leaves after the team, which is something that I don't think sounds fun to any kid, honestly. And then before he can say anything again, coach goes, Practice starts Friday. You be there. So the coach essentially promotes Josh to team manager without Josh saying a single word. So after school, Josh goes back to that basketball court and he hears the dog. So he lures him out with a vanilla pudding cup and it actually works really well. What would you get those rags off here? But his attention Temps fail to get the clown suit off of Buddy, and Buddy runs off into the woods again. Back home, Mom's running around full speed again. Josh, would you eat something, please? So Josh pretty much has eaten an entire bowl of SpaghettiOs, and his mom looks at him and says, can you eat something, please? As if, like, he hasn't eaten anything. But in the shot, you can clearly see, like, there's nothing left in the bowl. Anyways, that's kind of annoying. So Josh is trying to clean up the court a bit, and then he knocks down the fence and realizes there's these beautiful, lush mountains in the background. And this time, he succeeds in getting the clown suit off of Buddy by using a lot of pudding cups to try to get him closer. But first, they play a rousing game of basketball together because this is a basketball movie after all. And during this, Josh makes his first shot. Congratulations! So now Josh is in love with Buddy. He can't just leave him at the court. He takes him home and he tries to get him cleaned up. But now the big problem is he has to try to convince his mom to keep the dog because she doesn't know there's a dog in the house. Hi mom, can I have the groceries? Okay, what's going on? So mom's immediately like, I smell something fishy. What's going on here? You're never happy. You haven't been happy in a year. Josh, spit it out! Now I can't emphasize this enough. The ball and Buddy hit literally everything possible in the living room to make the worst mess imaginable. And then of course Josh is like, can I keep the dog? And mom's like, probably no. Josh gets a box and he starts writing Buddy's name on it like it's a doghouse. But now mom gets a little bit upset at what's going on. What am I doing? You are making a home for him and this is not his home. Do not get attached to this dog, Josh. Do not. Josh is finally happy and that's what his mom wants, right? And now the mom's pissed at him for being happy and she's saying they gotta get rid of the dog by Christmas. So do you want him to keep the dog? so he's happy or do you want to just get rid of the dog so we can go back to being sad normal Josh? So now we're back at basketball practice and for some reason he's literally just air pumping up all the balls and he's sweating profusely like he's sweating more than the people practicing. I'm a little bit concerned about Josh's conditioning if he's this weak and sweaty just pumping up some balls with air and he may need to see a doctor for that. So Buddy straight up goes ninja dog mode and starts climbing the archway that they walk through to get to the backyard and gets on top of the roof and gets up into his window. So the next day Josh is snooping around 
around underneath while he's trying to do laundry for the basketball team and he sees a picture of a basketball player with the NBA commissioner and he finds some New York Knicks gear. So now he's starting to get suspicious like why is that all here? But now this guy he's suspicious of comes down and talks to him. Why are you putting yourself through this? I guess I just like basketball. Pay attention to that because that's going to play a big role here pretty soon. When he goes home he realizes he has that basketball card of this same guy and his name is Arthur Channy. He used to play for the New York Knicks a long time ago. So now he thinks I'm going to go back and see if I can get this guy's autograph because that must be the janitor right? They look just like each other. But this janitor guy who he's suspicious of says no that guy's dead. That guy died a long time ago. But come on we all know it's really him right? It's going to end up being him. Died a long time ago. Oh. Thanks anyway. But this movie doesn't keep us guessing a single moment longer because in the very next scene, Josh goes to spy on this guy and he's literally playing basketball. So now it's Christmas morning and this is the deadline for the day mom told him he had to get rid of Buddy or they would take him to the pound. And when he wakes up, Buddy's not there in the bed. So understandably, Josh freaks out. He's like, where's my pooch? But when he goes downstairs, his mom has a bow on Buddy's head, essentially saying we can keep him. Simmons twins moved to Canada, God knows why. So now there are two open spots on the team and the coach is looking for guys to fill those spots. And since the janitor guy knows that Josh loves basketball, he sneaks a tryout for him into his locker. Don't even waste your time, water boy. <laughs> the bullies in this movie have hated this kid for zero reason the whole time. And look what these kids are wearing. I get this was 1997, but what is he wearing? So now they're back at the court and Josh is trying to contemplate whether or not he should try out or not for the basketball team. And Buddy is encouraging him to play by biting the basketball, which is so clearly flat in this image, but then all of a sudden is bouncing really well like a normal basketball. And while Josh was getting discouraged, he says, fine, go ahead and play, buddy. And then Buddy nails a shot and just stares him down like, what? What are you going to do about it? And I had no clue just how good Buddy is at basketball, but man, he's the Michael Jordan of dog basketball. He is nailing every single shot. So now they're bonding even more. They're playing basketball for a long time. Things are going so well. Yeah! Look, I get Buddy learned how to hit a ball with the clown guy earlier in the movie, and that's how he knows how to hit a ball. But the fact that he can make baskets, I'm just going to say is flat out magic, because it doesn't make any sense. If he can just hit the ball normally, he, that doesn't mean he can aim a ball. That doesn't mean he can shoot a ball. I don't know 100% what's going on here, but I think that Buddy might have stolen some of Michael Jordan's special stuff. That would explain why he's so good at basketball as well. Ram! You're late! Bring over that rack of balls! I'm here to try out for the team. So he's decided to finally try out for the team, but he does so so unenthusiastically. I don't, I, I don't know, I guess I kind of want to try out for the basketball team, I don't know. <laughs> Try out. He's the water boy. Oh, so just because he's the water boy doesn't mean he can try out for the team? Oh, really? Is that how that works? I'll, I'll go put that in my little notebooks and chart that away in the back of my head. Thank you very much. So anyways, Josh officially has tried out for the team and he ends up doing a great job, so he makes the team. Now Josh is getting ready for his first game and he's a little nervous. Nervous? This always brought me good luck. You should carry it tonight. Orange peel. Not just any orange peel. Scotty Pippen dropped his orange peel at the Sonics game. So as we'll find out, this kid collects really random things that players have had on the court. He just has like the weirdest good luck charms that he found from NBA games. And I just wonder if he's just like sitting behind the bench at every NBA game just waiting for someone to drop something so he can pick it up. Water boy, stay out of my way. He's saying stay out of my way to someone who was not in his way in the first place and had no intention of getting in his way. So now while Josh is in his first basketball game, Buddy is looking for him. So the Timberwolves are losing bad and things are just not going well for them at all right now. Score! I don't want to see you drop the ball again, you got it? So this coach is getting pissed at everyone. Things are not going well at all. He's even yelling at the bully guy who's like the best player on the team. So now Josh gets his chance to go in. Ram, check in. Do you see any other frams sitting here? Check in! And as we can see, Buddy clearly found out where Josh is. Buddy, in fact, gets so enticed by the ball that he ends up wrecking the entire game. <laughs> This movie has a way with making a scene that's already destructive be the most destructive it could possibly be. But then Buddy nails a shot and everyone forgets about all the chaos that's happening and goes absolutely crazy for him. But then Buddy hears something weird and he runs off to see what it is. You can do that! Just... What's going on here? Just running time through a little drill. That'll be enough. So yeah, the coach gets fired after that, so there's no coach now. I mean, understandably, this kid's nose was bleeding and he was throwing basketballs at him like a tennis ball machine. So now they have no coach. Who the heck is gonna be the coach of this basketball team? Would it be weird if I made a suggestion? So Josh brings forward the idea that maybe that janitor guy who used to play for the Knicks, remember that guy over there in the gym? That maybe he could be the next basketball coach for this high school team. And what do you know, they end up hiring him. So now the new coach is a former NBA player. See this ball? It's a good ball. 
regulation weight, a little worn, but you got a nice bounce to it. Maybe it was a bad choice hiring this guy. But in all actuality, he's using this as a lesson to teach the kids that they need to learn how to work together as a team before they even bring the ball into the picture at all. So that's exactly what they start doing. Two points! Fine! Only you didn't have the ball! What? Not watching your teammates, Larry. So now that they're learning how to better play as a team, when they actually are in the games, they're doing much better as a team. So they're on a giant winning streak and everything's going really well for the Timberwolves basketball team right now, except for the fact that the bully boy, Larry, is trying to play a lot of me ball, which essentially just means he's not playing as a team. So the coach goes ahead and he benches him for Josh. And his dad doesn't like this too much, so then they storm out. So I guess Josh is the starting point guard now? They're down by two at the final buzzer and Josh gets a chance to hit a three-pointer for the win. And what does he do? He airballs the crap out of it. See that dog? That dog couldn't give a rat's behind about his point average. He just loves to play the game. So you want me to play basketball more like a dog? I don't really like the taste of dog food, but I can start trying. Now I need everyone to rewind a little bit. Remember that clown from the beginning of the video that treated the dog like crap and left him in the highway for dead? Well, that guy just so happened to be watching the news at the exact moment they're talking about Buddy in the halftime show, and he notices somehow that this is his golden retriever, which is literally the worst thing that could possibly be happening at this moment. So now he goes to their house to ask for his dog back. <gasps> oh. But he also does it in the creepiest way possible. Walking up behind Josh's mom and being like, hello, out of nowhere is really creepy. Name's Norm Snively, I believe you got my dog. Old, uh, old blue. Yeah, I believe you got my dog, uh, old, uh, old Soda Pop is his name. Yeah, that's my dog's name. My dog's name is Soda. He's the fizziest boy in the bunch. Even though Norm is technically the owner of this dog, he ends up basically kidnapping him back from Josh and taking him back to the horrible life he was living before. The scene is really sad and depressing, so I'm not gonna show you any of it, just know that it's really sad and depressing if you end up watching this movie. <laughs> it's always the dog movies, man. <laughs> Who's cutting onions in here? Josh puts out a pudding cup at the basketball court for Buddy the next day, but he's not there because he's over there with Norm. Thankfully, Norm gave Josh a card on the way out, sort of mocking him and say that they would come to a free show for them sometime later. But that's really a dumb Disney villain move because it has his address on it, so now Josh is able to easily find where the dog is located. Uh, April's not good for us. We're booked on a tour. But Norm the Clown Man ends up noticing that Josh is trying to take the dog back and ends up going on a wild goose chase with them. During this chase, I found myself wondering, why does clown man Norm want this dog so badly? Wasn't he gonna take him to the pound earlier? But then I started to realize it's probably because of those fat stacks he's thinking of. It's all about the money. He wants money. He does such a horrible job chasing them down with his truck that he actually drives straight into the lake. So now they can regroup and try to live happily ever after, right? I know you're only a dog. So I don't expect you to understand what I'm gonna say. You can't come home with me. Wait, what? That guy will just come and take you back. So I'm gonna set you free. No, no, that's a horrible idea. Idea. He rescues the dog just to set him free, and then he leaves in the most dramatic way possible. He goes away on the boat, and then the dog is chasing him down, and even though the dog's right there and is desperately trying to swim out to him, he still just stays on the boat crying. This is the best thing for you, buddy. I'm so sorry. I know you're trying to swim to me desperately, and you may be drowning a little bit, but this is the best thing for you. Anyways, it's another really sad, dramatic scene in this children's movie. So now this is where the movie gets really crazy. The Timberwolves are going to the state championship game, and Josh is is obviously the starting point guard. Go down tonight, water boy. And of course, Larry's now on the rival team, the Warriors, who's going to be playing them for the state championship. So the Timberwolves are getting absolutely throttled and their players are all getting injured. So now they only have four players. So who could possibly fill that fifth spot? But wait, what's that noise? We've only got four players. What are we gonna do? Buddy! Buddy! Oh my goodness, it's a dog I just left for dead. I love you so much. I'm so glad you're back. So it seems that real quickly, Josh had a real change of heart about leaving Buddy because he's very happy to see him all of a sudden. And next, the craziest thing happens. Hey, fellas, I got an idea. K9 checking in. Do the Timberwolves want to substitute a dog? What are they nuts? He practices with the team. He travels with the team. He's right. Ain't no rules that the dog can't play basketball. That's right, everyone. The dog is going to be the fifth member of their team, and he is going to play basketball with all of them. Did you see that one coming? But honestly, it shouldn't be an advantage, right? It shouldn't be an advantage at all that the dog is playing. The dog's literally four feet lower than everyone else. Just put your hand out and you'll block every single shot the dog does, right? Well, at least that's what logic would tell you. Afraid your team might get beat by a dog? Put him yeah, in! Man. Put him in! <laughs> Look at the ref. You can even tell he's like, what the hell's going on right now? Slowly but surely, they start working their way back in the game with the help of Airbud. Oh, somebody cover the dog! Don't just look at the dog, cover him! I've got
gotta say, while this massive comeback is going on in the background, it really doesn't make any sense to me. I can't stop thinking about how this also isn't fair at all to the other team that earned their way into the state championship and then is facing a dog. How do they respond to that? No wonder they're doing so horrible. How do you guard a dog? How do you train for something like this? A basketball playing dog who makes every shot he tries? The coach is over here saying, stop looking at the cute cuddly dog. Someone guard the dog. Like, I mean, how do you coach that either? So this comeback and this crazy situation with Buddy playing in the game culminates with one epic moment. Josh gets another chance to make his game winning shot. Oh yeah, I forgot in the final possession that the Warriors have, Air Bud straight up hip checks Larry and for some reason doesn't get called for a foul. But anyways, I just noticed that. Back to the shot with Josh. Here we go. So Josh makes a shot and everyone goes crazy. But uh, oh, oh, this movie's not over yet. Just a minute. We have to finish the story with Mr. Norm the Clown Man, who somehow figured out where his school is and showed up to it in the middle of the basketball game. That's not creepy at all, is it? Your son's had his little fun now. I think it's time you give me back what's rightfully mine. You know what, Mr. Snively? I believe my son is right. That dog doesn't like you. So the answer is no. So Josh's mom says no to giving the dog back. And so Norm says, I'll see you in court. Holy Toledo, what is that dog doing in the courthouse? That's the uh, child, sir. Pretty ugly kid. The case is about custody of a dog. It's usually a bad sign when the judge seems like he has full-blown dementia. But nonetheless, it seems like he's taking this case very seriously, and he says this. I will not have my courtroom turned into some kind of a circus. And right as he says that, Norm walks in in his full clown getup. Who the hell are you? I'm the plaintiff. You look like an idiot. Man, after getting through this whole movie and getting to this point of it, this judge really is a breath of fresh air. After several more minutes, the case has pretty much turned into full chaos, and they can't make up their minds on what's going to happen. Until a basketball coach shows up and has a great idea again. This dog's what? Three, four years old. That makes him an adult in our years. I say let Buddy decide. So the same guy that had the bright idea to put the dog into the basketball game as the fifth player has another idea to let the dog decide which guy he wants to go with. And that's how we'll solve the court case. And his logic is that the dog is three or four years old. So if you take a look at dog years to human years, he's actually technically an adult, which is the dumbest thing to say in a courtroom. But nonetheless, for some reason, reason the judge accepts the deal. So anyways, this movie has devolved into the dog picking. I wonder who he's gonna pick, ooh. And you know what's really funny, while adult me is picking this apart, three-year-old me was like, oh yeah, let the dog decide. That makes total sense. Move back, everybody, way back. Come along now. I think it's safe to say this has devolved into a circus. <laughs> They're outside the courthouse and the judge has a seat in the center. They've set up a full-on event of some sort to where the dog can pick which side he wants to go to. Shut up. Hey! Screw this movie for even one minute trying to make me think that he doesn't pick Josh in this situation. Yeah, he obviously picks Josh. There you go. He just wanted to rip up the newspaper that Norm was holding like a good boy. <laughs> Yeah, so while technically Norm should have probably gotten the dog because he had papers on the dog, I guess there was some reason to say that maybe he was mistreating the dog so Josh should get him. At the end of the day anyways, Josh gets full custody of the dog, everybody's happy, everyone's celebrating, and that's kind of how the movie ends, just like that. But if I have to be honest with you, I do have to say that this movie is absolutely nostalgic for me. It is still absolutely a really good movie. I recommend if you've never seen it, go watch the whole thing on Disney+. Plus. This movie has heartfelt moments, it has a few funny moments, it has the cheesy moments, moments we talked about, but it's really not that big a deal. If you're looking at it from a kid's angle, it's a 5 out of 5 movie. If you're looking at it from an adult's angle, it's like a 4 out of 5 at minimum. And I know I have my nostalgia glasses on here, but this is a really good movie, so you definitely need to go check it out. If you're still here, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing and commenting on this video. It means the world to me as I'm growing. Please check out the video you see on your screen right here. I look forward to seeing you when I upload my next video. And as always, it's been awesome. Remember to stay askew. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.